All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Welcome, welcome to my talk. My name is Carol. I work on the data onboarding team as a TPM. And today I'll be talking about Singularity and Spade. Um, they're both under the DStore umbrella, which Will talked about this morning. This is kind of, you know, uh, the modular components that make up DStore. So what is Singularity? Singularity is a engine that powers the DStore API to prepare data to be onboarded to the Filecoin network. It's the mostly, most adopted tooling in the Filecoin ecosystem. It accounts for 20% of all the data that's prepared uh, for Filecoin. And since Singularity's launch last year, right now we're in V1, V2 just came out, uh, we have had 229 clients from around the world who use Singularity to prepare 3 billion files, which amounts to 340 pips of active deals, uh, which translates to 3.4 exabytes, exabytes of uh, quality adjusted power on chain. Um, and V2 is coming out with new features uh, that I will dive into uh, deeply in, in, in a bit. So before I dive into the implementation details, I want to talk about the storage connections. Um, Singularity is so versatile that it can connect to many different systems, um, be it your S3 bucket, your local drive, your HTTP or FTP connection, um, and dozen other types. Um, Singularity works seamlessly with your DStore APIs, which data clients can call to tell Singularity that a file is ready to be onboarded. Uh, and it tells the Singularity the location of that file or, or the files. So say you have a bunch of car files in your S3 bucket, you can tell Singularity to fetch them from S3 directly, which eliminates a lot of the overhead associated with the intermediate steps. So question for the audience. Um, how, how many of you by show of hands have stored data on Filecoin. Oh, a bun bunch of you, awesome. Um, so for those of you that have gone through the process, do you know how much storage you needed during the onboarding process? The answer is a lot. You need a lot of copies of the same data, and I'll go into why. You need to have, well, first of all, the original copy of your data that you want to be stored. Um, that you're hosting in a cloud service somewhere or in your local drive. And then you need to convert them into car files, which is the same content, it's just in a different format. So that's the second copy, right? And then you have to let the storage providers know these are the data I want to store, and storage providers need to download it from you, and that's a, a third copy, and then they need to seal it. Um, so storage provider side, they have an unsealed copy and a sealed copy. So in total, there's like four copies of the same data, right? And that is a pain point that Singularity V2 wants to address. This new feature in Singularity V2 is called inline preparation. The car files are the same content as the original files, so that you know, if you think about it, if you know the algorithm of how the car files are converted or how the mapping uh, looks like from the original files to the car files, then you don't really need to store the extra copy, right? And so this cuts down the number of total replicas from four to three because Singularity knows this mapping. And it saves you space, it saves you time because you no longer need to write the car file to your disk, and reversely, if you want to ha save the car files and not the original files, you can do that too, because this mapping can be reversely, can be bi-directional. You need less storage, right? It further simplifies the data onboarding process because you no, no longer need to serve the car files to the SPs. You can just send the SPs the location of your files. Uh, for example, you tell the SP that my files are in this S3 bucket, um, and, or you give the SPs an HTTP endpoint to your local drive or something like that, then the SP can just go ahead and download it directly. So what, what does that help, right? 
Um, oh, actually, let's go, go to this one first. It helps optimize the bandwidth because, or bandwidth limit because if the if you have to give your files to Singularity or to some data preparation tool, and and then the SP downloads from there, it's the bottleneck is kind of on your bandwidth, right? Say the SP is an enterprise SP and they have large bandwidth, but the speed at which you give the files to the um, server is dependent on your internet bandwidth. And for you know a typical client, um, it might it might not be you know, the, 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 the best connection there. So Singularity helps you um, by eliminating that bottleneck. SPs can just directly download from uh, wherever you have your files. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, this was the inline preparation. This is not synced to my laptop, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll quickly go over the things just now. So yeah, this is the sing Singularity V2 and then connection uh, to many different, uh, actually 40 plus different types of connection that Singularity can make. And then this is, you know, um, the storage um, copies needed for uh, a rep for, for a single uh, file, you need like four different copies, and then inline preparation algorithm. So yeah, the well, um, we talked about how Singularity lets you eliminate one out of the four copies that I talked about, right? And then um, Singularity can also serve as a content provider. Um, Singularity lets you uh, retrieve from uh, Singularity directly, right? If you, Singularity already knows where your data is, right? So if there's a retrieval client, it can, autom it, it can just go ask Singularity, where do I retrieve the data? Um, it can retrieve car files, payload CIDs, and et cetera. Um, if you're hosting your copy online, then Singularity doesn't need to, um, or storage providers don't need to maintain an extra on-sealed copy. Singularity will just direct the retrieval traffic to you, to the client, because you're already hosting it anyway. So we eliminate a need for the SP to have an on-sealed copy. So that cuts down the number of total copies down to two. We talked about the band bandwidth bottleneck, how Singularity lets um, eliminates the, the bottleneck there on the client side. Um, now there's a problem, right? Um, if the SP directly downloads data from your local drive or from your S3 bucket, um, and how, how does it know um, what, to, what to do? Like, is there, there's a, does anyone see the problem here that there's something missing that I hinted on earlier? Um, the, the, the thing that's missing is that if, um, if storage providers just go download the files from your local driver S3, how does it know how to convert them into car files? So how, do, how does it do that? We have a Singularity Metadata API. This API returns the deterministic logic of the mapping from original files to car files so that you can just inline stream in the, uh, the original files from wherever the data source is and then car them um, on the go. This is what this API does. It's very, very powerful. This eliminates uh, the need for another uh, car file copy on the client side. So that was all the V2 Singularity data preparation, data preparation features. Uh, now on to deal making. So Singularity V2 supports leg legacy Lotus market and, and boost market. Um, it supports a traditional push mode as well as pull mode. Um, so in the push mode, um, many of the, it's like from the client. The client wants to store a bunch of deals. It tells the SPs, 
uh, these are the deals I want to store. It could be like one-off deals or it could be like periodic, like a cron job where the SP, um, the client says, hey, SP, are, are you like at this given, given time, if you're not free, like I'll send you again, uh, things like that. And uh, you can also specify the max number of deals you want to store with a single SP, or how much data you want in flight. So in flight here means that the SP has accepted the deal, but they haven't started working on it. So how much of that do you want in flight? You can specify all these things in singularity. Um, and there's a pull mode as well, where it's kind of SP initiated instead of client initiated. Uh, when SP is ready to make deals, they will say, hey, like give me some deals that I, I'm eligible for. Now ret retrievals. Um, retrievals on Singularity is very flexible. There are many ways to serve retrievals. You can serve from the Singularity content provider directly. Uh, we can get it through the Singularity to the SP, like, and so from, from this kind of uh, way to get the data from SP, and you can get it from SP directly. Uh, if the SP is you know, hosting some endpoint uh, for HTTP download, you can just get it from SP directly, but that depends on SP um, app announcing that or advertising that they have this CID in the IPNI. Um, and you, know, you can retrieve different versions of a file, whole directory or data set, different snapshot or directory um, of the data set. You can retrieve files by path uh, and car files. So this is upcoming dashboard that my team is working on. Uh, this is the uh, dashboard that lets you monitor your data onboarding progress, uh, where your deals distributed, uh, what, what, like what, what's the progress, what was the status of each deal, um, which storage providers you're working with, and all these things. Um, it also has an explorer where it lets you see a snapshot of your data set and the file system as well. So this was Singularity. I have another section on Spade. Um, if you have any questions, please go on the Filecoin Slack, Singularity-V2. Uh, also, our, um, this is the QR code for singularity.storage, our website. Uh, there's a bunch of information there. We just shipped the website. It's, it's really, really, um, I, I really like the website. It's really cool and sleek. Any questions I can answer right now on Singularity? Cool, on to Spade. Okay, Spade, I, I really love Spade because I've been working on this for uh, a, more than a year now. Um, how, I, how do I view Spade? Spade is a high throughput, low friction, SP driven, and SP-driven, I'll, I'll dive into that in a, in a bit, um, data onboarding tool to the Filecoin network. Um, these are the points that I think, I believe, Spade differentiates itself from the other data onboarding tools or marketplaces. Um, and you can, we can talk about why. So data onboarding um, is, has been a pretty client-oriented um, process in, up until now, like the client uh, sends deals to SPs and asks them, hey, like, can you accept this deal? I want to store these things. Like, are you available right now? Can you download data right now, um, et cetera. And SPs might be busy at that moment in time. They might be like sealing, they might be busy, their bandwidth is like deployed to something else and, and they miss out on the deal, right? And clients might have, um, you know, a different, might be this misinformed that the SP does not want to work with them, which is probably not the case. They're just busy at the moment. So what Spade does is that Spade gives the power to storage providers in this two-sided marketplace. Storage providers with Spade will have the um, autonomy to go fetch eligible deals whenever 
um, they are ready. So as the SP, if you're working on something, you're like, oh, that's okay. I can just go to speed later when I'm free to get the deals that clients have already uploaded to Spade. And Spade is a modular, um, I will dive into the different components of Spade um, that we can kind of pick and choose which components that you would like to use as a storage provider and as a client. Storage provider selection is a blocker um, in the Filecoin ecosystem. Uh, for a while now, like uh, a lot of the complaints I hear from, or the feedback I hear from the ecosystem is like, I don't know which SPs I want to work with. I have a bunch of data, but none of the SPs, I, I don't know any SPs or they're not accepting my deals. Um, so SP selection is a pain point that Spade wants to address uh, by having a marketplace. And um, SPs are sometimes, you know, um, well, also, SPs are the most sophisticated players in the market. Right? As a client, you probably don't want to know all the nitty-gritty details of Filecoin. You just want to bring your data here, you want to upload it to Filecoin, and you want to retrieve it later. Like, that's all you want to know. You don't want to know the car files and you know, the, uh, the different retrieval methods and, uh, and, and like how, how the data is sealed in, in the Filecoin ecosystem. So having SPs, uh, be the one that have the autonomy to do these, um, to initiate deals is very, very powerful here. Um, let's see what else is here. Um, data onboarding to Filecoin um, can benefit from more tooling, and this is why we built Spade. So on the demand side, Spade, like I mentioned, is a two-sided marketplace. There's the demand of folks who want to store data. There's the supply of storage providers that can offer data um, storage. And on the demand side, um, we have, you know, um, we, we have um, Web3 native data on ramps. Uh, those are the, you know, folks that are already in Web3 and they need data storage. Um, they care about verifiability, you know, they care about the proofs, and Filecoin offers exactly that. So they can uh, come onboard their data to IPFS or Filecoin. Um, and we also uh, are targeted towards data owners uh, that are interested in uh, cheap archival um, solutions. We're working with a bunch of institutions, uh, universities, you know, like government sometimes uh, that just want an archival solution. Uh, there also are the, the, on the demand side. And there's uh, large data only entities looking for ways to onboard data to the decentralized web. These are probably Web2 um, players currently, and um, if they want to get a foot in the door in Web3, the future of the internet early, they can do that. Um, so those are the you know, three different types of the demand we see. And on the supply side, those are the Filecoin storage providers. Uh, they adhere to a baseline of network-wide norms, so that means that they are acting in a way that the network um, wants or like um, encourages them to work in that way. Um, they can, well, in, in that I also mean like they sometimes need to disclose something about themselves. Um, so this is the KY, where the KYC, KYB comes in. If clients um, want to, say, store with SPs uh, in a specific region, or the clients want to store with SPs that have specific bandwidth or some other criteria that the clients care about, um, Spade would like to know that, right? And, and Spade would like to know what the pool of SPs um, what their uh, attributes are so that we can do the matchmaking more seamlessly. So this is the two-sided market. And um, in the current iteration, we're in pilot right now. Uh, Spade has a demand for a higher level of sophistication from uh, clients. So the clients must be able to prepare the, their data. They need to know how to like prepare their into car files 
and the corresponding companies, and uh, they also need to define their requirements. This is what I talked about um, regarding the, the location and the number of replicas they want, say, in a specific region or, say, in a for a specific storage provider, maybe they say, I only want to store max two copies with a single storage provider entity, um, even though, even if this entity has uh, locations all over the world. Like, it's very flexible how you want to define your um, policy or criteria as a tenant. The SPs will need to uh, be able to take pool-based deals uh, this is not really a requirement, this is like a treat uh, for most SPs, if you can just manage your um, workflow, um, in a, customize your workflow in a way that works best for you. Uh, you know best when you're free, so when you're free, you can go get the eligible deals. And sometimes, you know, in, in, for example, in this bear market, uh, things are not going pretty tight for some SPs, right? And SPs don't, um, you don't need to always accept deals. Um, if, if you feel like that's the best thing to do right now, you just like take a pause right now and, and that's totally uh, possible as well uh, because everything's customizable. Uh, and uh, ideally you also leverage an automation built by the community to op optimize your hardware utilization. Sharing some, sharing some stats. Um, so since Spade has uh, entered the pilot phase, we have had uh, onboarded seven pips of data uh, with 35 different SPIDs. And we have um, two tenants, or tenants here means clients, operational at the moment. Um, and we're looking to onboard at least two more in Q1. Let's dive a little bit into the architecture of Spade. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Spade is a modular, um, is, is a modular system, and you'll see on the right side, or maybe your left, le on the left side, excuse me, um, the green boxes are the demand side, the clients. Uh, the storage client comes in with data they want to store and they um, prepare them uh, into PCIDs um, and, and th this, this is like uh, they, they use some data preparation tooling, could be Singularity that we just talked about, um, and they uh, specify the requirements uh, they have for the SPs they want to store with and the replication policy, like how many replicas I want, in what region, in what, um, with which entity. Um, and, and then uh, the broker service in the middle, right, this is the kind of where all the magic happens of matchmaking. Um, on the demand side, we have storage providers, and these are the eligible, eligible SPs. And I say eligible because um, these SPs have to provide um, their uh, very basic information about them to become eligible to work with Spade because like I mentioned, Spade needs to know some basic information about these SPs so they can match make uh, properly. And we have a KYB, this is where the KYSP service comes in, where we have uh, a triangulation service that um, pings from SP nodes from network, a network of nodes all over the world and makes the best educational guess on where the SP is located. Um, we also have validation bots, or now we call them retrieval bots, that try to retrieve from these SP entities to see how well they're serving their retrievals. Um, and in the middle here, we have a deal oracle, um, or we call, them, we call it a spade oracle. This oracle is a real-time uh, oracle that lets you see the sector states from the chain. So um, this uh, helps with you know, maintaining that um, source of truth on where, where the SP is in terms of data um, sealing, in terms of uh, deal making. So 
Yeah, and any questions on this slide? This is the, the last slide I have. These are the components that I just talked about. Yes, Steph. Yeah. It, so the question is... Where does the broker service actually run? Is it distributed across the SP nodes or is it somewhere else? Yeah, great question. Right now it's run as a centralized service um, that we can use to best match make. Um, yeah. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was the LibP2P relay service. This is a remote signing service where, you know, the, uh, for a deal to be complete, the, both the client and the SP has to sign, right? But because the client has already uploaded uh, the, their list of CIDs to be stored to Spade, they, are, they don't need to be online during when the SP says, I'm, I'm free now, I can come get the deals uh, or get the CIDs to store. Um, the, if the client is not available at this time or they're not online, Spade can uh, get, get in here and uh, sign on the client's behalf without having to need the client's private keys. And this is what the relay service uh, does. It helps with the privacy. Cool, and that concludes my presentations. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to go on Slack, the Filecoin Slack, go on Spade Help. Uh, we'll be more than happy to answer your questions there. Thank you.